Thanks for tuning in early to worship today. I'm glad you're here. I'm Christopher Keywell, Communications Coordinator at Bethlehem, and your host in the comments section of Facebook at the 8.30 and 10.30 premieres. We will continue to premiere worship videos like this on Sunday mornings for the foreseeable future as it remains the safest worship option while COVID-19 continues to spread in our community. It's your generous support at Bethlehem that provides the technical resources and staff time needed to produce these videos each week. And there are many ways you can offer support financially without an offering plate. You can mail in a check to 4310 County Road 137, St. Cloud, Minnesota 56301. You can use the text to give feature by texting a dollar amount to 320-289-4093 and following the prompts. Or for consistent support, even when you're unable to join us for worship, set up a recurring donation at BethlehemLutheran.org slash egiving. We will be celebrating Holy Communion in the service today. Please remember that all are welcome at the Lord's table. It's expansive. It reaches out into your home and the homes of all of those who are joining and worshiping the risen Christ today. Please have some wine or grape juice and any type of bread ready for that portion of the service. Whatever you have on hand will work. The promise of Jesus' presence remains the same. Now here's some ways you can grow in your faith and share God's love with our neighbors. Processing the Pandemic is a series for elementary-aged youth and their families. Activities include indoor and outdoor games, processing with paint and crafts, and tips on how to process worry and anxiety using your faith lens. The series will take the place of Faith Circles meeting on Sunday mornings from 9.30 to 10.20, starting this Sunday, April 11th, and continuing through May 16th. Parents are welcome and encouraged to participate. It'll be fun and might even generate some conversation between you and your student. Learn more at BethlehemLutheran.org slash processing the pandemic. The Monday Bible studies took a break during Lent to encourage participation in our Connecting Faith and Daily Life small groups. Pastor Peter will lead the Bible study of the upcoming Sunday's preaching text at 9.15 a.m. on Mondays starting April 12th and continuing through May 17th. All are welcome at this on-site Bible study opportunity. The Monday evening Bible study will begin meeting April 19th in a hybrid fashion, both on-site at Bethlehem and online via Zoom. Contact the church office for Zoom meeting details. Confirmation at Bethlehem begins in seventh grade, but it's nothing like confirmation programs of the past. Here, confirmation involves parents as well as the students as we go deeper into the story of our faith through experiential learning, community building, and service. The sixth grade milestone on Wednesday, April 14th at 7.15 p.m. will help families prepare for their years of confirmation. Families will also have the opportunity to sign up to meet with Pastor Chad over the summer over ice cream. It'll be his treat. Learn more at BethlehemLutheran.org milestone. Curious about what it takes to become a member of Bethlehem? You're invited to a new member session on Sunday, April 18th at 9.30 on either, either on-site at Bethlehem or online via Zoom. In this brief gathering, you'll hear more about life at Bethlehem, focusing on our shared mission, vision, and values, as well as ways to share your gifts and serve in the community. Contact Lene Cobb, Welcome and Serving Ministries Coordinator at 320-217-6537 for more information, or sign up online at BethlehemLutheran.org slash membership. Another good book will have a hybrid meeting on Tuesday, April 27th at 3 p.m. You're invited to join the discussion of Neither Wolf Nor Dog by Kent Nurburn. The author shares stories from a road trip through the Dakotas with an elder of the Lakota tribe in the 1990s. Join the on-site discussion in the Magi Room or join in the discussion via Zoom. Find more information or request Zoom meeting details at BethlehemLutheran.org slash book club. Thank you to all who purchased Easter flowers in memory or in honor of loved ones. If you purchased a flower, you may select a flower to bring home from the sanctuary during office hours this week, 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., Monday through Friday. The Shooting Star is a weekly email newsletter offering more ways to help advance God's mission for Bethlehem in our community. If you haven't subscribed yet, find a link at BethlehemLutheran.org communications. That's also the page where you can find other ways to connect with Bethlehem, including links to our social media and a way to sign up for important text message updates. Thanks again for tuning in early today. The worship service will begin momentarily.
Good morning, and welcome to worship at Bethlehem's online service, uh, the second Sunday of Easter in the Easter season, and one in which we celebrate for a time the uh, amazing resurrection of Jesus from the dead. We have such a story today, and one of the things you may notice, just as a way of understanding Jesus' welcome to us, is that when he comes into the midst of the disciples for his first appearance and they see him, he doesn't chastise them for their uh, clay feet, uh, and in some cases their cowardice, but rather his words are, peace be with you. He accepts us as we are, for who we are, although in the long run he never leaves us as we were. But welcome to worship this morning. I have a couple brief announcements. Pastor Chad is not with us uh, today. He is on a very much needed break. And just to remind those of you who attend the Monday morning Bible study, that will begin tomorrow, uh, this Monday. We begin our service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy, we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, 
Enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, hello and again, welcome to another one of Chad's Chats. We are with our Early Childhood Center friends today once again. Guys, can you in a really, really loud voice say hi? Hi! Okay, and now maybe do this one. In a really quiet voice. Hi. Can you say hi? <laughs> All right, good job, guys. It's a loud way to hurt there. Oh. All right, so once again, I got the mystery case, the boot case of mystery with us to help tell a story. And it's a story that everybody at home is gonna be hearing today. And so in my blue case of mystery, I have two pictures. I wonder what they're gonna be. What do you think they're gonna be pictures of? Any guesses? What's that? What kind of, you know what kind of birds these are? What kind of birds are these? You're right, they're birds. I know. What kind of birds? Do you know? I don't think everybody would know this. What do you think? It's a duck. It's, it's, it's a not dog. a duck. It's a dove. It's a dove. Yeah, that's right. my guess. It's a dove. These are pictures of doves. And so in, and doves, they represent, they represent a word. They represent this word, peace. Can you guys say peace? Peace. Excellent. Now, when you are coming in the morning and you walk into your classroom and you see your friends for the first time, what do you say? Hello. Well, you could say peace, but what do you typically say? Do you say, hello? Hello. But, um, and then what can you do as a sign of like, hello? Can you wave? Yeah, you can wave to people. But here's what I want to tell you guys. When, in the story that we're gonna hear today, when Jesus comes and he meets his disciples, they're afraid, and instead of saying hello and waving, he says, peace be with you. And I, there's a, there's a gesture that goes with that. Instead of waving, you can go like this. Peace be with you. Can you guys try that? Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Yeah, that's kind of hard. Let's try it one more time. On the count of three, ready, everybody, one, Two, three. Peace, Peace be with you. you. Yeah. That sounds kind of funny, but that's what Jesus says. And so in our lesson today, our story that we're going to hear, Jesus comes to the people who are most afraid, and he gives them a sense of peace and well-being, and that is certainly good news. So guys, I want to talk to you more, but we have to end this for everybody, so you know what we do. Ready to wave and say goodbye to everybody at home? Bye!
The Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. The story of Easter continues as the risen Jesus appears to his disciples. His words to Thomas offer a blessing to all who entrust themselves in faith to the risen Lord. The reading begins at verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, when Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I never knew one of my grandfathers, a Norwegian immigrant pastor who died at 51. What mom told me about being there when he died and what my grandma said as he breathed his last. Now he's crossing the river, she said. Crossing the river. I like that picture, even as a little boy. Now that I'm older, I know people have pictured death like that for a long time. The ancient Greeks had a name for the river even. It was called the River Styx. And the most recorded American gospel song ever has this line. At the river I stand, precious Lord, take my hand. Crossing the river may lead to different ideas of what's on the other side, but here's one thing every culture agrees on. There's no round trip ticket to that crossing. We might write stories like the Christmas Carol where a spirit comes back. But until that first Easter Sunday, nobody claimed that a real flesh and blood person, full body and well, returned and witnessed and was witnessed for a time by the people who knew him in several locations by multiple people. 
So I wonder if that's what makes the resurrection stories in the Gospels and Acts so strange. How do you describe what you've never seen before, what you've never heard of, and up till the time what you never even conceived of? The first reports from the witnesses of the women of what the angel said in the empty tomb are not believed. And when the disciples, uh, Jesus appears to the disciples, initially they're afraid. And he uh, says, peace be with you, because they're afraid it's a ghost. And as they try to sort things out and they tell of what it was like, they say, he, he had a body. He, he was flesh and blood. You could eat with him. It's re and it's really him. And he knows us and we recognize him. This is no ghost or apparition. And as word spread, there are more stories that are shared, like the two travelers on their way to Emmaus who were instructed by a stranger uh, about the scripture and their hearts burned even as he was speaking, but it wasn't until they ate together that they recognized who he was. He, he, the stories basically seem to come down and say, wow, we struggled at first to believe it was true. Even though Jesus had told us that the Son of Man would rise again, we didn't know what he meant. It just didn't register. We didn't expect it. It was Jesus, but it was Jesus we knew, and he knew us, and he was flesh and blood, and yet he wasn't the same either. He appeared, and then he left. And during 40 days after he rose, we didn't know where he would show up, or even if he was going to show up, but he did. And we came to understand that he appeared to us in order to prepare us to be convinced that he had risen and then to be his witnesses in the world. We came to see that this wasn't the end, it was the beginning. And by the time he ascended, we had changed too. We knew he was alive. We were convinced of that. And our job now was to spread the good news. And we began to realize that Jesus was God's Messiah in a much bigger way than we had ever thought of. The Thomas story is one of these stories. And I think it gives a couple of really important gifts to us. One of them is I really appreciate the honesty of Thomas's struggle to believe. Because let's face it, rising from the dead defies everything we know about nature and life. And the disciples were thinking people who ended up putting their very lives on the line. And of course they struggled. The whole, their whole time with Jesus, they struggled if you stop to think about it. They were constantly getting stretched spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, and they were forced to change some of their small-minded thinking and their prejudices. Um, so with all of that going on, I, I would find it pretty hard to relate to the Gospels if these people didn't have human flaws doubts and failings because that's what human beings are that's what I am and I kind of appreciate that this was shared and that the disciples were honest enough to share this freely I like Thomas's spunk he's trying to grab onto some reality in a grief crazy days after Jesus was killed and, and it's like he's saying I'm not going to be gullible here folks But the most important gift is that once he sees Jesus and he hears his knowing words of what he had said, where he said, unless I see his nail hand and the, and the um, 
in the piercing of his side. You know, I won't believe. And once he realizes that this is Jesus, he goes with it the only place he really can go. He says, my Lord and my God. I'd like to break that down. My. This is personal. Uh, Jesus is not an idea or on a doctrine or a set of teachings. It's a relationship with God who knows me, who teaches me, and I come to know him. He also uses the word Lord, my Lord. And this is his surrender. This is where he says, you're my leader. I'm yours. You know what they used to call the Christians before they called them Christians? They called them followers of the way. The way, of course, was the way of Jesus. And Thomas is saying, "Uh, I'm yours. I will follow in your way. But the best and the most powerful is the last, where he says, God, my Lord and my God. Because I would imagine from his perspective, he may say, I may not fully understand all of this, but I know you are God. Because uh, here in the whole, uh, whole uh, Gospel of John, this is the highest title that's given. It's given by St. Thomas. My Lord and my God. And I suppose that as Thomas gets the moment, he realizes only God can create a round-trip ticket on this river. Everything's changed now. We're living in the dawn of a whole new age. Jesus is letting us know what's in store for those who love him here and now as we and the world confronts our sickness unto death and the promise of life to come. I'm 74. And I have to confess that I'm much more mindful of what it'll be like to come to that river now that I was even 10 years ago. And I suppose that's natural. When I try to grasp that though, it's, it's, it's a strange feeling. And I, I would guess others of you have the same who are about my age or older. All we know is this world. Uh, my earliest memories are as of a child. They're scattered. But as I gained consciousness and came to know the world and came to know people and have lived life and found myself constantly learning things, this is all I know. And now what I know is that I'm going to come to that river. And when I try to contemplate, well, what's that like? What's on the other side? I think of the universe that is infinite, it seems. Uh, The time is relative. And uh, when I start thinking too much about that, I I get overwhelmed. It's too much for me. And I have to stop thinking about it. But when I go to who I know, then it's personal. Just like the song, At the River I Stand, Precious Lord, hold my hand. That's the gift. Believing that the one who walks with me today will be there tomorrow and is greater than anything I'm capable of getting my mind around. But this I know. He's my Lord and my God. Thomas saw this, and that was enough. That's what I want to focus on when I come to that river. 
Amen. At this time, we invite you to consider giving an offering uh, or we observe the time that we have set aside as offering. It's really part of worship, if you stop to think about it, because it's a way of responding, but it's also a way of following. In the earliest tradition of the Christian church, they called the Christian uh, faith not Christian, but they called it the way. Uh, it was a path a direction. And that direction, of course, was led by Jesus Christ. So it was, a Christian was a follower of the way. And one of the ways we follow is to be his hands and feet, to be part of the community of faith that stands for what he values and what we know works for life. And so thank you ahead of time for the work that you do in your daily lives, your participation in the life of the church with your time and your gifts, and also the sharing of your resources.
Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church on earth so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You direct the nations, O God. Guide all in authority that they shepherd their peoples in the ways of, you love, of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. We lift up before you those in our midst who have asked for our prayers. Jolene Perkins, Ralph Searles, Monica Anderson, Kristen Markfort, Anya Bohm, Lillian Johannes, Barb McPhail, Karen Knutson, Heidi Larson, and Todd Ferguson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We come now in our service to prepare for receiving communion and let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another as part of that preparation. Gracious God, we confess that we've sinned in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Forgive us and strengthen us to turn from sin to serve you in newness of life. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection. The resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ, given for you. And this is the blood of Christ, shed for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his holy and precious blood, Strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.